Hi, uh, good evening. This is Mark, the incognito astronomer. Um, this is the inaugural uh, observing session with my SV Boney uh, 503 70 millimeter EB telescope. Um, I've got sharp cap pulled up, and I do have an object centered right now in the field of view. Um, it's kind of difficult to see. You might be able to see a tiny little smudge right about there. Um, that is M33, Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy. Um, I'm going to take a look at that tonight. Um, now it is in the evening, so these are my settings, just so you can kind of see. 16-bit um, uh, exposure times a little over five and a half, a little under five and a half seconds. Uh, gain is 400. This is a Uranus C camera with a 585 sensor. Um, and uh, I've got uh, it linked to CPWI, which is Celestron's, uh, is soft, Celestron's uh, software. Um, I'm using a Celestron Altaz mount um, for this. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a live stack um, with these settings, and then we're going to adjust the histogram and see what we have. So M33 uh, is the 33rd object. Um, in Messier's catalog that he found, um, or at least that he cataloged. So uh, it's a galaxy. It is one of the big three in our local group, uh, along with the Milky Way and then the Andromeda Galaxy. Triangulum is about uh, two and three quarters million light years away. So the light from this galaxy has taken closer, over two and a half million, close to three million years to arrive here on Earth to be observed by this little telescope. Um, and it's one of the closest galaxies. Um, the only one that's closer, the only main one that's closer is Andromeda, uh, which I did a video on uh, previously. So we're looking at exposure, seven frames, uh, 38 seconds. And now we're at eight frames and 43 seconds. I'm going to hit the buttons here. We're gonna auto uh, color balance which is here, and then I'll get rid of those green tones and make it more of a neutral color. It's lining up all the histogram peaks. So then I'm going to take the sliders. This is the black level here. I'm going to move that over, and what we should see, we should start to get, I'm going to move it over to the peak, basically right on the peak of this main peak here. This, I think, is light pollution or miscellaneous I don't know, noise in the image. I'm going to move the mid-level over. This should bring in details. And you can see, there comes the galaxy. And it's right here. It always amazes me how electronically assisted this This is all real time. This is no post-processing. This is the image exactly as I'm seeing in real time. And it's been under two minutes. Moving that mid-level back a little bit because we blew that out a little. Now, I do like moving the white level over. Um, to me, sometimes I do like this line here, this curve, to be a little bit more vertical, especially because of how steep and narrow this peak is. So I'm kind of tweaking it a little bit. Um, right now, we're at 2 minutes and 10 seconds. And, and there we go. Um, one of the things that I am checking tonight uh, with the SV Boney um, is whether or not I'm going to need a uh, field uh, flattener. Um, field flatteners are a optical uh, set of um, lenses that go in and flatten the image because the stars in the corners uh, tend to be stretched uh, with a fast refractor. This refractor is an F6. Uh, which is faster than my Celestron with its uh, focal reducer. Um, it also has a wider field of view, and it's got a shorter focal length. It's got like half the focal length of my Celestron. Um, so the I'm able to get a much wider field of view with this. It's one of the reasons I picked it up. It's a completely different kind of scope and let me frame different objects better. Uh, plus, I got a good deal on it. So um, you can see the field rotation here. That's these lines here. This Right now, Triangulum is almost at zenith, uh, which means straight up on uh, in the center of the sky above my head, um, which means it's in a good place to uh, observe right now. Um, 
because there's a less uh, atmosphere that it has to go through uh, to get the light has to go through to get to me. Um, it's a very clear night, very calm. Uh, we're supposed to be getting a storm later this week, so um, I wanted to get in an observing session while I still could. Uh, all right, so I've been talking for five minutes already on this one object. Um, it's been exposing for three minutes and 47 seconds. I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to take a look at this. And one thing I can definitely say is that I really think the stars are more pinpoint uh, than they were in my Celestron. I probably need to um, do another collimation um, to see if I can get those stars up. Um, I'm looking in the corners here of the frames. These stars don't look really oblong. I'm only doing five second exposures and it's stacking them one on top of each other. And I really don't think I need a fifth planet. So based on what I've seen, there's a little bit here maybe. This, this one's a little oblong, a little oblong. They're starting to show that little curvature, but it's not too bad. And to be honest, considering, oh, there's some walking noise. These are pixels that are moving along with the uh, image. Very interesting. Um, so anyway, here we are back to the main image. And you can definitely see it's curving more and more. So it's basically spinning around the center, which is here, as it does its exposures. Um, it's going to do that because it's in it's in Zenith. Um, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, I'm going to go to a couple of other objects tonight. Um, but for, for right now, I'd say this is a pretty good starting uh, view with the SQ Boney 70EB.